Yes, all right. So I am going to be talking to you all today about hurricane mitigation, preparedness, and insurance. So a lot of people know that I'm a property and casualty insurance agent. A lot of people have no idea that I am also the executive director of the International Hurricane Protection Association. So what is the IHPA, you ask? That's a great question. So the International Hurricane Protection Association is a not-for-profit organization which unites and represents the hurricane protection industry. So we were formed in 2000. We are a non-for-profit. We're comprised of manufacturers, suppliers, contractors, insurance agents, architects, engineers, building code writers, government entities, you name it. We have them in our membership. But we're all focused around preservation of property and life from the destruction of a hurricane. So we meet quarterly, we are an international organization, so we have members across a couple different continents, and uh, we all focus on hurricanes. So hurricane season, it is, we are right in the thick of it. Hurricane season runs from June 1st to November 30th of every year. Now that doesn't mean that we don't have hurricanes outside of that period of time, right? So a lot of people think that that's, that's it. That's the only time hurricanes come. We've had hurricanes as early as May. We've had hurricanes later than November 30th. But historically speaking, you have the most activity between September and October. So that's really the peak time for hurricane season. You're going to see the most activity, generally speaking, is in that uh, like late August through early September, October. So first thing we're going to talk about Types of hurricane mitigation. So that's a big part of my association are different types of hurricane protection. We are brand agnostic. So that's something that's really important. I'm not going to tell you what kind of shutter is the best type of shutter. I'm not going to tell you what type of protection is the best type of protection. And I'm not going to tell you who to buy it from. All I'm going to do is tell you about the different types of protection, why you would choose that one over the other. And we really advocate for using protection of some sort. But the most important thing when you're buying hurricane protection, especially if you're going to buy hurricane protection and not plywood, you want to make sure that you go through a reputable dealer, you want to make sure that they're licensed, and you want to make sure that there's a product approval number. Product approval numbers are extremely, extremely important. If you are making a hurricane protection um, device in the state of Florida, in order for it to be code certified, so in order for it to be up to building code, you do have to go through testing. And that's typically done with an architectural testing firm. But when you're shopping for hurricane protection, get the number. That's the only thing I need you to remember about hurricane protection. You want to get that product approval number because that means that it's gone through testing. It's up to Florida building code and it's going to help protect your home from a hurricane. There's a lot of product out there that doesn't have product approval. We see vinyl sheets. That is not hurricane protection. Please do not let anyone sell you window film and tell you it's hurricane protection. That is not product approved. That is not building code. Please do not, please do not buy window film. And also we're going to touch on plywood. We don't consider that hurricane mitigation in our association. We believe that something is better than nothing. So if you cannot afford hurricane protection and we have a bad storm coming, plywood is a viable option if and only if it is installed properly. Hurricanes are not just one big massive ball of wind. There is a pushing and a pulling motion that the wind does. So if you have your plywood nailed in with some two by fours, that becomes sucked off your house and becomes a flying projectile to go through your neighbor's window. So if you're gonna do plywood, make sure you have it professionally installed. You can go on YouTube and you can find ways to professionally install it. Anchors, anchors are your friends. So don't use plywood, please don't use plywood, get hurricane protection. So first type of mitigation that we're gonna talk about are panels. So panels are really popular. Steel panel shutters, they are corrugated, they're really economic. If you buy a new construction home in Florida, they should come with panels. So that is what the Florida Building Code actually requires now, is newer construction homes. They all should come with FBC approved and um, numbered panels. You can also though go with aluminum panels. So similar in look, they're just way lighter. So if you're gonna be installing them yourself, aluminum is usually the way to go. Clear panel shutters, these are really cool. They're actually, you can see through them. So they're really, really strong polycarbonate panels. I've actually been able to jump on them like a trampoline. I've taken a baseball bat to them. You can hit them as many times as you want. 
doesn't shatter, doesn't break, and you can see out of them. So they offer light in the middle of a hurricane. So it's just a nicer alternative to those dark um, boarded up shutters. You've also got fabric shutters. These are really nice. So they're just little pull downs. They're one piece. They've got the same rigidity as a panel that is made of metal or wood, but you've got a little bit more flexibility to it. It allows some light in. Something interesting to know about building codes. So the Florida building code allows for your window to break as long as there is not, um, as long as your home doesn't become depressurized, right? So fabric shutters are great up here in Tampa because you can have a fabric shutter, you can actually have a projectile hit the fabric shutter. And even if your window shatters, as long as the home doesn't get depressurized, so as long as we don't have air rushing into your home, which that's how your roof gets ripped off, typically speaking, is your doors and windows blow out and then uh, wind gets up underneath and pushes. That's typically when you see homes that are just completely blown apart. It's because you have openings that are not protected. The opening gets burst, like it busts open. And then you have a rush of air and water, and that is when you see really catastrophic damage. So Florida building code, you can actually break the window. Miami building code, you cannot. So you will not see a lot of fabric shutters down in South Florida. Miami building code is much more stringent. We actually recommend if you're buying a home to ask if it was built to Florida building code or Miami-Dade. Miami-Dade is actually a much stricter building code. So fabric shutters, you won't see as much of them, but they are a really good option. And I do see a lot of people up here in the Bay Area that use them because they're more cost efficient. Accordions are really nice. So you'll see these in a lot of higher end homes. They fold in just like an accordion. So they're metal, they're corrugated, they're usually aluminum because they're really light. Um, and then they fold away. So these are kind of your hurricane shutters that you don't know about until you pull them out. But they are already they're already put in. So the difference between panels and accordions, roll downs, Bahamas, um, panels, you have to put up each and every storm. That's not fun. So a lot of people, they start with panels and then once they go through a bad hurricane, their panels get beat up. You realize that, oh, it did stop that two by four from impaling um, my four-year-old's bedroom. Had that actually happened? That was one, they had a, a panel and big dent where it would have gone through their four-year-old's bedroom. So um, really nice to have hurricane protection. But the accordions and some of the designs I'm going to show you moving forward, those stay installed year round. So you only have to worry about it when you have a hurricane. We have some clients who don't live in the state and they'll buy hurricane protection like this because it also offers burglar protection. So if their home isn't going to be habitated, this is another option for them to add some extra security because if a two by four is not going to get through it, you're probably not going to smash my window to get through it either. So those are accordions. You've got Bahama shutters. So they just, they're really pretty. They look like wood shutters. You wouldn't even know that those are hurricane, but they're aluminum. So they're really just, they're, they're pretty. The next couple ones I'm going to show you, they offer hurricane protection, but they look like your standard shutters, right? So you've got hinged colonials. Those are really pretty. I personally love roll downs. That's what I'm uh, hoping to get here in the near future. These are motorized or they can be hand cranked. And typically speaking, if you have a motorized one and the power fails, you can also hand crank it down. We build in fail safes to those. But it's really nice. They roll right down. They look like they were built for your home. And we see a lot of these in higher end homes. So that's usually where you'll see more of the roll downs or in commercial buildings. We see a lot of commercial roll downs. All right. So now we're going to get to one of my most controversial forms of hurricane protection, and that is impact glass. We as an association really, really struggle with impact glass. We have members who sell it and we have some members who will adamantly swear against it. And the reason why is in a very short clip I'm about to show you. So hurricane glass, impact glass, is two very, very thick panes of glass that have like this like clear poly vinyl vitro thing in the middle. You can take a baseball bat to it over and over and over and over and over and over again and you will not puncture it However, please pay attention to this video. Do you see the shards that flow back? So that is the biggest reason why we as an association really, really struggle with impact glass because it does. You can see that it prevented the two by four from penetrating. It keeps your house from being depressurized. The second that you have any kind of impact, that shards out. And it actually, if you're standing there by the window, you've just been blinded. Um, also, as soon as you have an impact, you have to replace these. So 
you'll see a lot of impact windows in high-rise condos. You see a lot of them on the beaches and it's a great option. It's great, it's gonna preserve your property. It's not necessarily what we recommend first and foremost, simply because of what I just showed you. Um, but it is an option and a lot of people use them and I do see a lot of them up here in the Bay Area. All right, friends, I'm about to dispel a myth that I'm sure if you've lived in Florida long enough, you've probably heard someone try to tell you is true. I'm about to show you why it's false. So taping your windows. I hear this every hurricane season. We get asked every year about hurricane tape. Tape is a myth. Hurricane tape is a myth. This does not exist. It is not real life. Um, if you tape your windows, I have a short little clip to show you guys just to show you how um, different protection works. We, the IHPA, participate in a yearly event. It's called the Eye of the Storm. It's an event put on down in Fort Lauderdale at the Museum of Discovery and Science. It's sponsored by the International Hurricane Research Center that's at the Florida International University. FEMA is involved, emergency management's involved, and we play a pretty big part every year. We bring an air cannon. So we bring an air cannon. It shoots a two by four at, I believe, a rate of 30 miles per hour or 50 miles per hour. But it's this typical standard projectile. And this is what we actually do in architectural labs. So this is how hurricane product is tested. We bring it out to the public so that way they can see how different types of material stand up to a projectile. So this is a short clip. I've actually clipped it to just show you the hurricane protection. So the video doesn't really matter, but you just wanna watch. There's some two by fours that are shot. So this is glass. You're gonna watch a two by four um, get shot at glass. And what my president's telling you is that this is a myth. Boom goes the dynamite. Uh, so blows right through the tape, does absolutely nothing. Um, but you can see that shutter in the background, the shutter stopped it. So um, that's the biggest myth that we see over and over and over again. That, that doesn't work. Please don't tape your windows. That is not hurricane protection. Um, I'm just gonna make fun of you if you do that. But you can see metal shutter. So that's a steel shutter um, and that's a standard projectile test. So I believe it's 20 feet away. That's the impact glass. Uh, I believe we also shoot, that's a, I believe, a accordion. That's an accordion. That's just a steel panel. So accordion, yeah, just bounces off. So that's really the reason why hurricane protection is worth investing in. You can see that that was shot over and over and over again. By the end of the day, I think we'd shot that panel, that particular panel, three or four times. And though it did have some dents, nothing ever went through it. We actually have only ever had one fail and it's because it happened to hit right at the lock. And we sent that back to the manufacturer and we actually found out that that one was a defective unit. So uh, hurricane protection, it is critical. It is something that I recommend every Floridian should if nothing else have the conversation with a contractor about because it's not as expensive as you think. There are actually some programs that subsidize impact windows for you. Uh, there's a lot of different ways that you can get protection for your home. It doesn't have to cost an arm and a leg. There's a lot of different ways to finance it. But I promise you, hurricane protection is a much cheaper solution than having to rebuild your entire home. Even if you're properly insured, the displacement from your home, the anguish, the mental heartache. I mean, before we even get into property, hurricane protection will save you quite a bit of heartache and quite a bit of money. So, okay, go to the next one. Now we're gonna talk about hurricane preparation because we have this fun thing called coronavirus happening. It's gonna be an interesting season. This is something that we have never faced. Hurricane season is fun enough and we are gearing up to have what looks like an above average season. We have the added fun of coronavirus. So in a typical hurricane season, these are the items that I would normally recommend. This is not an exhaustive list. This is not, a, this is not the be all end all. This is a great starting point. So things that people sometimes will forget, you wanna have 72 hours of drinking water per person that goes for food as well. You also wanna have some water on hand for sanitation use. You can also do this within your home. So I know people who buy bottled water. I had a couple of friends this last storm season, they invested in some Rubbermaid containers like the $6 ones at Walmart and they filled it with tap water. That was their plan, was that if they needed to have water on hand, they had bathtubs filled up, you can fill up your dishwasher or your uh, washing machine. Things like a non-electric can opener, my generation struggles with that. We may or may not have power, so non-electric entertainment, especially for people with little kids. Uh, we get so focused on getting all of the life or death stuff that we forget 
that we still may be without power for up to a week, sometimes two weeks. So having some things on hand to keep us from boredom. Cash, emergency fuel, personal documents, store those in a waterproof container. It's really great if you keep your social security card and your birth certificate on you and then they get soaked because you didn't prepare properly. So these are just some of the items that I'd recommend if you go to INTHPA.com and I'll have that website for you at the end. This is actually on our website. We publish a yearly hurricane preparation checklist. So these are just some of the items that I'd recommend that you have in your kit. Um, I'm a really big fan of reusable things. So Brita filters are a really nice option instead of bottled water. Um, just different ways to cut down your footprint and make sure that you're protected. So things that you're gonna have to think about this hurricane season, and it's already a challenge because some of these items are hard to find, they're slowly coming back onto the market, but you wanna have face masks. And if you can't find face masks, having some sort of plan for facial coverings. We aren't sure what hurricane evacuation looks like in the middle of a pandemic. Community leaders are actively trying to solve that riddle. The shelters that we've used for years may not be options anymore. The amount of people that we could put in a shelter has probably going to change. And at the same time, I was talking about someone with this earlier. Honestly, I think that if we have a cat three, cat four, cat five coming towards us, we're gonna take the immediate peril of, we cannot let someone write out a category three, category two even in a mobile home. We know that that will kill them. If they go into a shelter, we don't know. So it's one of those, if you have a plan in place and you have a, you know, if we have a hurricane, this is where we're going to go. I highly encourage everyone on this call, even if you live in a beautiful brick house with a fantastic roof and hurricane clips and all that good stuff. Once we hit a cap four and really once we hit a cap five, there is nothing you can do. There is truly nothing you can do against a cap five, most basic constructed homes. Um, so even if you think that you will never need to evacuate, the most important thing that I can stress to you from this conversation is to get a plan, sit down with your family, have some sort of written plan, because if it's a worst case scenario, you don't want to be figuring that out on the fly. You do not want to be figuring this out at the 11th hour when Irma is barreling down our doorstep and it's no longer hitting Miami. It's coming straight to Tampa to cap four. I saw that. I'm really grateful. I wasn't a personal lines agent. It was very, very scary to be at Lowe's the day before a hurricane and seeing people grab light covers. They're grabbing light panels because that's one thing they can put to cover their window. It's not going to do anything. So make sure that you have a plan in place this year. Coronavirus is going to change things. So just keep an eye out as you see your particular community um, putting out information. Just keep updating your plan. And I hope and pray that we don't need to use these plans, right? But that's why we plan. We can't plan to fail, but we need to plan. So that way, if something happens, you know that your family has the best chance of survival after and during a storm. So, and make sure you grab some hand sanitizer. And if you don't have hand sanitizer, plenty of CABA members have tchotchkes that are hand sanitizers. So there's always an option. Remember to try to use a CABA member. If you can't find hand sanitizer, I can list five CABA members that I know of who have given me tchotchkes that are hand sanitizers that I can point you to. All right, and now we're gonna get to insurance. So I have a really unique position in that I am both on the mitigation side. So I work with contractors and suppliers and I understand a lot about the hurricane protection physically. I also understand how to insure your home against a hurricane. So if this was your home, do you know how you're covered? Have you had that conversation with your insurance agent? Because I think a lot of people think that they're covered and they may or may not be. Um, you know, that's a good question. Does my homeowner's insurance does it cover hurricane damage? It depends. It really depends. Um, we're going to talk about some coverages that you'll typically see, um, different perils that come from a hurricane. The two biggest ones are obviously going to be water and wind. So wind is the biggest one. Wind is the one that you're usually going to see. Typically, if you have a homeowner's policy, you have a dwelling fire policy. So if you own your home, or if you own a rental home. Typically speaking, as long as you see hurricane deductible with a number next to it, you have wind coverage. I have a handful of clients who have come to me with policies that are three or $400 and they don't understand why it's that cheap. It's because they have no coverage for hurricanes. 
you can do that in the state of Florida. You don't have to insure yourself against a hurricane. I don't know why you wouldn't, but you don't have to. So if you have a policy and it says X wind, that's a big deal. That's something you need to get on the phone with your insurance agent and say, what is this X wind that's on my policy? Why does it say I don't have coverage for a hurricane? Um, if you see wind, if you see a wind deductible, if you see a hurricane deductible, your policy should have wind coverage. So there's typically a separate hurricane deductible. Your homeowner's policy has two different deductibles. You're all other perils. So literally anything else that could possibly happen to your home and hurricanes. Typically speaking, you'll see a hurricane deductible anywhere from as low as $500 up to I've seen as high as 10%. Typically, most people have a 2%. That's two to 5% is what I'd say is industry average. I personally carry a $500 hurricane deductible because I looked at the premium difference. Wasn't that much. For me, it's worth it. A lot of people, thousand or 2% may be the lowest that you can go. So just be aware that your hurricane deductible is the portion of risk that you're assuming. So if you do have a hurricane and God forbid, you have a total loss and your home is insured for $100,000. Well, if you have a 2% hurricane deductible, you're responsible for that 2%. And then the insurance company covers the rest. So I have one client who has a $14,000 hurricane deductible. I offered him a $1,000 hurricane deductible. It would cost him $100 more a year. And he didn't want that. He was comfortable having a $14,000 hurricane deductible. So make sure you look at what the deductible figure is because 2% sounds really small until you realize that that's 2% of $200,000 or it's 2% of $300,000. That number gets really big really quickly. And a lot of the time you can choose a lower hurricane deductible and the premium difference isn't as much as you think. So if you look at that hurricane deductible, you go, yikes. Oh, I don't know if I can afford a $6,700 deductible. That doesn't seem really feasible. Have the conversation with your agent. That may be the best option for you, but you very well may find a more comparable hurricane deductible and you'll find that the premium isn't as scary to lower it as you think. Um, oh, and this is also important. Other structures, personal property. Typically speaking, they are covered differently. So your other structures is the probably most problematic coverage in here. A lot of the time there is not coverage for a hurricane. So your other structures are going to be things that are detached from your home. So your fence, if you have a shed, if you have a gazebo, if you have, like I have a deck. So I have a deck outside. That's gonna be my other structures. It's not attached to my home in any way, shape or form. Many companies do not offer coverage for other structures in a hurricane. Oftentimes you can add that coverage on to your policy so you can endorse that on. A lot of the time, they just don't cover it. Um, so if you lose your fence to a hurricane, there, there's not coverage for that sometimes. So it's a question that you'd like to ask your agent, especially if you have some significant other structures on your property. Ask, is, is it covered? If it's not covered, is it possible to endorse that coverage on? Because oftentimes you can. Um, but that's, that's probably one of the trickiest coverages is your other structures. That one is often a little funky. And then your personal property, you want to ask how that's covered as well. Most of the time, there shouldn't be an issue between personal property being covered during a hurricane. Some carriers will only offer you a certain level of coverage for a hurricane. They'll try to insure it at actual cash value, which is depreciated value for a hurricane. So when it comes to your specific insurance policy, the number one thing I can tell you, have a conversation with your agent. If you don't have an agent, you really should get one because they they will look at your policy and they can tell you how you're covered. They can point out the flaws in your policy. They can point out the weak parts. It's on you to have that conversation. So if you're not sure, have that dialogue because knowing how you're covered, you may realize you're going cheap on your insurance and it's really gonna bite you down the road. Or you may have really great hurricane coverage and you don't know it and you're panicking about a storm, but you can have the peace of mind that you've got a great agent who's got really sufficient coverage on there for you. And if you do have a loss, you know that it's properly covered. So wind coverage, make sure that that's on there. Make sure you've got an affordable hurricane deductible and make sure you know how everything is insured on your policy. Water. <laughs> so water damage is the, I would say the most fickle part of a insurance policy, period. Um, so when it comes to water, there's two different types of water that we typically see from a hurricane, rising water and wind driven rain. So rising water is considered flood. Nine times out of 10, flood is an excluded peril 
on your homeowner's policy. We are slowly, very, very, very slowly seeing homeowner's insurance that's offering a flood endorsement. I personally carry one on my own policy and it offers better coverage for less. So conversation to have with your agent, does your current homeowner's policy have coverage for flood? If it doesn't, can you endorse on flood? And if you do endorse on the flood, does it offer you coverage for hurricane damage? So rising water. Flood is not included on your own homeowner's policy. You may purchase it separately though. So flood insurance is a standalone product you can get. You can go through the National Flood Insurance Program, which is run through FEMA. That is, it, it is, the rate is the rate is the rate. Doesn't matter which carrier you go to. If they tell you it is a NFIP, National Flood Insurance Program policy, doesn't matter if you're with Allstate, Progressive, Travelers, you name it, the rate should be the rate. When you get into private flood, that's where you start to see some more options. You'll sometimes see lower premiums if you're in a desirable flood zone, if you have a really good elevation certificate, which can save you some money on your flood insurance. So I cannot imagine living in a peninsula and not carrying flood insurance. I just can't. Especially during hurricanes, one inch of water can cause $25,000 of damage. That's the statistic that we use. Hurricane Harvey, we saw water levels rise 5.5 to 6.5 feet. Yeah, so hurricanes cause rising water. Hurricanes cause flooding. Flooding is typically not covered. So if you do not have flood insurance, I would recommend looking into it. It is not as expensive as you think. If you have a $250,000 home and you're trying to get that level of coverage through the NFIP, I believe that policy is currently running less than $600 a year. So it's coverage that you should ask about if you don't have it. And if you do have it, you just wanna make sure that those coverages are how they work. Some policies are written differently than others. Every carrier really is different. So make sure, ask your agent, do you have flood coverage? If you have flood coverage, how are you covered? And do you have coverage if there's rising water during a hurricane? The other piece is wind-driven rain. Wind-driven rain is a very, very, very fun policy to talk about because sometimes it's covered and sometimes it's not. It really is down to the carrier. More and more carriers are rewriting their policies to give more coverage for this peril. Um, but if the roof of your home is ripped off and you have water intrusion because of rain, most carriers offer coverage for that. Some carriers may not. Um, if your home has rising water, that is called a flood. That is usually not covered. Wind driven rain very well may be covered. So the water portion of your homeowner's policy in general is usually pretty fickle. And then once you get into hurricanes, it gets even more complex. So every policy is written differently. Every insurance carrier is different. I have two carriers that look the same on a quote. But when you actually get back into their forms, you get into their manual, you start to actually read how the policy language is written. One carrier offers significantly more coverage than the other, but on your quote, you're just seeing a 2% hurricane deductible. So it all looks the same. So make sure to have that conversation, ask how your particular insurance policy covers floods, covers wind, covers water. Don't rely on the internet. The internet does not know you. The internet does not know your specific policy. Just because a carrier offers that coverage doesn't mean that that coverage is on your specific policy. So make sure, read it, ask your agent, have those conversations, and don't be afraid to make changes to your policy. Now is the time to do it. You cannot make changes once a storm is coming. We have a moratorium that will be issued. It is really unfortunate when I have clients that are waiting and they're trying to see if the storm's gonna come it turns just a little bit. The second we even think there's a storm, hurricane, like carriers shut down. You cannot get insurance. You cannot change your coverages. You cannot change your deductibles. You cannot buy flood insurance. Flood insurance usually has a 30 day waiting period. So if you wait until a storm is coming, it is too late. You have, you have, you have run out of time. There is no other option. There is nothing I can do for you at that point other than say a prayer and hope and like pray for the best. That's all we can do. So don't wait to have these conversations. It is June 23rd. So we are 23 days into hurricane season. If you haven't had this conversation, now is the time. Now is definitely the time. Make your changes now. Hurricanes are causing massive rate increases. 
I was talking about this a little bit earlier, but we are seeing Hurricane Irma claims. They're still coming in in the state of Florida. You can file insurance claims up to three years after a storm. We are still seeing claims come in from Hurricane Irma. We are still seeing hurricane claims come in from Hurricane Michael. It is not going to get any better, friends. I wish I could tell you it was. I am the bearer of bad news. I am your doomsday insurance lady. Homeowners insurance rates this year, we are seeing on average 25 to 45% rate increases up to 100% rate increases for most clients. I have seen insane rate increases this year and it is due to the damage from hurricanes. Hurricane Michael alone caused over $6.6 .6 billion in damage in Florida. And that was about two months after the storm. That's what we had gotten to with 6.6 .6 billion. Irma hit the entire state. It, it is very scary when you're watching the state of Florida get swallowed up by a hurricane, knowing that every single part of the state is experiencing claims at once. That's why your rates are going up. That's why you're seeing crazy bananas rate increases is because those carriers took losses and they are recouping those losses. The reinsurance carriers, so insurance carriers are insured. We have seen catastrophic losses. We have seen a lot of insurance fraud. There's so much insurance fraud, especially when it comes to hurricanes. We in Florida have a big issue with assignment of benefits. Do not sign. Do not sign an assignment of benefits. If you are a CABA member and I find out whoever you are insured with that you sign an assignment of benefits after this call, I will shake and wag my finger at you and say, you are the reason why our insurance is going up. Um, assignment of benefits, it is a nasty, nasty little piece of paper that contractors get you to sign, but they come and they say, hey, Diane, we just had this hurricane and I know that you probably are experiencing some roof stuff. Let me just get up on there. And if you have more than 25% of damage, so if your roof is more than 25% damaged, we can get you a new roof and it's not going to cost you anything but your deductible. And most of the time we can take care of that for you too. So you say, that sounds great. Amazing. And you sign this little piece of paper. It's an assignment of benefits. What that has done is transferred your insurance policy to that contractor. They now get all of your benefits. So instead of a, Diane has 25% damage on her roof, we can probably fix it. Oh, it's like a $7,000 roofing job. What they'll turn around and do is they'll send the insurance company a bill for 40,000. And they'll say, this is what we think that our, our claim should be. And even though their adjuster has a $7,000 quote, because I presented a $40,000 quote, and I can justify it because here's all the damage and we're going to use these materials and it's indemnifying. So they're being made whole. They're going to get a new roof. It's just more expensive. The second the insurance company goes to deny it, that contractor goes, wonderful. Um, because they turn around and they threaten legal action. As soon as that happens, the insurance company rolls over and they pay it. They just pay it simply because it is the more cost effective option than trying to fight it in court. And typically speaking, big bad insurance company will lose in a court of law every single time um, because you have individual big bad insurance company. Jury of your peers is always going to give it to the little guy. So if you have damage after a storm, what do you do if you have a claim? You call your agent. Um, you know, that, that's something to do. Is your home, is your car insurance, are you insured against a hurricane? Probably. Typically speaking, if you carry comprehensive insurance, you don't know, you call your agent. Um, you know, it's having a relationship with an agent is important. If you have a hurricane claim, what do you do? Don't sign an assignment of benefits. That's the number one thing you don't do. Do not let a contractor into your home. Do not let a contractor onto your roof. I don't know why I have to say that, but I do. It is very, very scary. After Hurricane Irma, I believe there were 31 or 51 contractors who were arrested because they were not licensed, they were not insured, they were going around and knocking on people's doors where there was storm damage and saying, hey, Sharon, I think, you know, we saw that there was a storm that came through. We think you may have some damage. We're able to get all of your other neighbors a new roof. We'd love to see if we can do that for you. Let me just climb up on your roof really quick. If you got enough damage, take care of that for you. If he's not licensed, if he's not insured and he falls off your roof, that's on you. That's on your homeowner's insurance policy. On top of that, if you do business with that roofer and he makes, uh, he damages your home, he puts that roof on and he's not licensed, he's not insured and there's damage, that's on you. That's, that's where it starts to get icky. So after a storm, 
If you have damage, first thing you should do is call your agent. If you don't have an agent, call your insurance carrier. Most of the time after a storm, we set up cat teams. So catastrophic loss teams, they actually will usually come out to the areas that were affected during Hurricane Irma. I know that Tower Hill, they're one of the carriers I represent, they mobilized. They actually brought their underwriters onto the scene. They were going out to people's homes and signing checks. That's what happens after a big storm. If we have a big loss and Tampa gets hit, we bring people in. We have enough help for you. Everyone in the company basically gets reassigned to claims and all we do is answer the phones for weeks and we handle claims. Call your agent, don't sign anything, call your agent. Don't, don't, don't let contractors, um, don't let contractors take advantage of you. And I'm, I miss the most important stuff, guys. If you have a claim, first, first thing, first and foremost, make sure everyone's okay. Um, that's something that I tell every client. We can always replace your stuff. I can always rebuild your house. We can always buy you a new car. We have got insurance. We can close that loan for you. I can't replace anything that's living. I, I can't do that. So the number one thing, make sure everyone's okay. Make sure everyone has all their limbs intact. If they're not, deal with that first. And then you call your insurance agent and we make sure that we get that claim filed. And they, the nice part about the agents is that they take care of it for you, right? They have a vested interest in making sure that you're taken care of. So they're gonna be on this claim like white on rice. That's the goal is to get every insurance, hurricane insurance claim closed as soon as possible because it's three years later and I'm still dealing with Hurricane Irma. We don't wanna deal with that. You don't wanna deal with that. Um, so call your agent. And um, you know, this is, this is the most important year. It really is to be prepared. If there is any year that I should tell you, do not leave this up to chance. Do not leave this up to fate. Do not gamble. Do not hope and pray that it doesn't come here because I can't promise you that. I can't promise you that. And even if you think it's not going to come here, I don't know if you remember Charlie back in 2004, 2005, it was coming right at us. And then it turned. Hurricane Irma was going to hit Miami. And I remember texting my friend down in Stewart if she wanted to come stay with me. Well, two days before the storm, I got a text saying, hey, that storm moved. Do you want to come stay with me down in Miami? Because it looks like it's going to hit you. So be prepared. If you guys want more resources, uh, the IHPA is a not-for-profit. We do not recommend any one particular brand. We do not recommend any one particular member, but we do have a lot of resources. We are affiliated with a lot of different government agencies. We have some really nice resources on our website for consumers. So if you visit imthpa.com, we have more information. I also have um, Professor David Dilley in my back pocket. So global weather oscillations, we really just lucked into finding him, but he's the most accurate storm forecaster for the last 10 plus years running. He had a 91% accuracy rate for 2019. Wow. It's crazy, it's kind of spooky. I don't know how he does it, but it's freaky how accurate he is. And we're actually putting together a presentation for CABA members. So he can predict hurricanes two years out. He can actually predict from four years out, but we told him to stop doing that. So he is getting a CABA presentation specifically for CABA members to get a preview of his 2020 forecast. So as soon as I have more information on that, I will get that out to the membership. But really, it has been a pleasure getting to um, educate you guys on this. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. These are just some cool photos. Some of what I get to do is really fun. We have quarterly meetings every year, and this was down in South Florida. So FIU has the wall of wind. So cool. It's these giant fans. You can see that's me for scale. I'm five, six, just so y'all can do some size scale in there. Um, but these are fans that can simulate a hurricane. It is the only hurricane simulator in the world that you can actually get cat five winds in a real environment. So there's all sorts of hoses and fans back there, but they can actually generate up to cat five winds. They do a lot of hurricane testing down here at FIU. And that's part of what I've gotten to do with the IHPA is uh, we get to go see, they're actually called big ass fans. That's, that's the actual technical name for them. Um, so yeah, if you guys want any more information on hurricanes, either on the mitigation side or on the insurance side, if you have questions on where to go to get prepared, you don't know what websites to look at, you're not sure you know, where to begin, please give me a call. I'd love to sit down with you. Protecting people, protecting property, that's what I love doing. Getting to do that on both sides is even better. So if I can help you on the hurricane mitigation side, if you have questions, I have phenomenal contacts. 
who are really knowledgeable on the technical side. I understand the broad overview, but I've got guys that actually wrote the Florida building code. I can get you in touch with the people who actually wrote the code. I can also get you the people who do the, who do the testing. Yeah, we can pretty much hook you up with anyone you want. So um, if you guys, we have a little bit of time. So if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. And really, thank you so much for joining me and for paying attention. And I hope you learned something today and you feel a little bit more prepared for this hurricane season. Okay, thank you. Anyone have any questions, comments, concerns? Well, I had a question about um, the, the shutters. Yeah, I was writing, I took a lot of notes. Anyone about want to take any bets on how many hurricanes we have this season? Uh, oh, I didn't, I didn't make this point. I think that's important. Pet peeve of people in the industry, actually pet peeve of hurricane scientists. I actually got this from Eric Solna, who's the head of the International Hurricane Research Center down at FIU. We hate when people say it's an average, above average, below average storm season. Grinds my gears, gets under my skin. Because it creates a false sense of security or a false sense of fear. We just need one bad storm for it to be a catastrophic season. We did not have a high volume of storms, but Hurricane Michael is devastating. Irma, uh, the year of Irma, we had a whole lot of close but not. But you get one bad storm, you get an Irma, you get a Florence, you get a Maria, you get a Michael. I mean, we even had Matthew a couple years ago, and that one was really devastating for some parts of St. Augustine. I know Flagler was completely flooded. So don't get lulled into a false, false sense of complacency. And also don't read into the fear that is sometimes mongered around hurricanes. Be vigilant, be actively monitoring it. I highly recommend following a couple of people on Facebook. I really like Dennis Phillips. That's who I personally choose mm -hmm. to follow for my hurricane news because he's really, really good about telling you the information without creating fear and panic. Right. Um, and he's really realistic. And he'll, he'll tell you when it's time to panic. He has a panic scale. He's really great. Um, Global weather oscillations, that's who I personally follow. Um, because he, he is the most accurate and he does do some free weather tracking. He has zones that you can purchase, but find somebody who gives you the information, doesn't create any kind of, you know, high or low about it. It's just watch the storms, pay attention. If we have 45 named storms and none of them hits, that's a great season. If we have one named storm and it's a cat five, that's a catastrophic season. So don't play into the media hype of it's above average or below average, or we're going to have 26 named storms this season. So get ready. Okay. I have 26 named storms. If they all stay off the coast, I don't care. Um, so yeah, be prepared. It's, this is, we're anticipating 2020 is going to be another active year. We're anticipating actually more activity for 2021. And then we're hoping to see us go back into that quiet period. So we reopened the floodgates 2017 with Maria or with Irma and Maria. And we're hoping to kind of bookend that period. So 2017 to 2021, that's where like hoping and praying that's the current cycle. And then we can go into a nice period of quiet time where um, really our association had no relevancy for about 10 years because we had no hurricanes and we have now hit a stretch. So it's weird as an insurance agent, we hope against hurricanes. And as the executive director, I hope for hurricanes because it's really good for the association when we have storms. Um, but there's a whole lot to hurricanes living in Florida. This is one of the most important natural disasters to really understand. There's a lot of different things you can learn. Highly recommend checking out Eye of the Storm. Eye of the Storm is a virtual event this year. And you can actually go and watch all these videos. That clip that I showed you, that's from the Eye of the Storm virtual series. That's also on our website. So uh, lots of resources for you guys, lots of hopefully helpful information. And I cannot stress to you enough, we've got, I believe, 16 or 17 different insurance agents in CABA. So if you haven't had this conversation this hurricane season, now's the time. We are all up to our eyeballs and renewals. And we may seem like we don't want to talk about it, but we do. We really do. And we all need to. So don't be afraid to bug your agent. Don't feel like you're bugging us. We'd rather you be properly insured. Um, but if you haven't had that conversation, have that conversation with any agent. Um, because it's, it's the most important conversation I really feel like you can have living in Florida when it comes to protecting your home. It's great, Kelsey. It was great information. I took a lot of notes. All right, friends. So with that...
that is the end of my presentation. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop my screen. And um, like I said, if you guys have any further questions, I'm always available. I love talking about insurance. Uh, I love talking about hurricanes. I like to think of myself as a nerd. So anytime that I get the chance to be verbose and talk a lot, I love it. Um, and anytime that I get to be helpful, that's even better. So thank you all for your time this morning or afternoon. I really appreciate it. Okay, can everybody hear me? Can you yeah. guys hear me? Okay. All right, great. Yeah, thank you. Kelsey can't hear you. I can't <laughs> hear anyone. Kelsey can't hear me. I don't Okay. Oh, that's fine. I, like, I can't hear anyone. <laughs> that's okay. That's all right. No, thank you so much. That was a great presentation. I took a lot of notes myself, so I learned a lot um, this afternoon. So hopefully everybody else did too. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing everybody next Tuesday at noon. Um, we'll have Dr. Nanda from Tampa General Hospital talking about how to be safe at work, which is going to be something we're all looking forward to, especially with the, um, we just heard this morning that Hillsborough County has now enforced the mask rule um, on top of Tampa and St. Pete. And we heard Pinellas is coming soon. So we want to learn um, the latest updates on what we need to be, do, be doing to be safe. And we are going to be continuing the virtual meetings um, through the, the month of July, uh, maybe through the month of August. We'll probably be continuing the Lunch and Learns uh, into the future, even when we're going live. So a lot of cool things coming up. And any suggestions that anybody has, if you have a suggestion for a speaker, anything else we could be doing, just please, please let us know. Send me an email. Um, let us know. Okay. Awesome. Well, and Sharon, I just answered your question. I wasn't able to see the chat for most of that presentation. Um, most economical would by far be steel panels or fabric shutters. Okay. So if you're going to look into them and you're looking for cost effective, um, yeah. steel fabric for sure. Okay. Awesome.